Hey, what's up, guys? You ready for one more completely objectively true tier list? This time for exotic heavies? Well, I am, so let's go in. Again, this is my opinion. It's mostly PvE, not so much PvP, but a little bit there. Maybe some Gambit. But, overall, this is my opinion. That being said, my opinions are objectively true, objective facts. So yeah, let's just get into this. Anyways, we're going to start off with the Anarchy. It's it's a D-tier exotic. It's worse Wither Horde in my eyes, at least. It's worse Wither Horde. You, it has worse ammo economy. The damage is higher because it's a heavy, but... You know, you could actually use a damage heavy and then maybe throw on a Wither Horde. Over using Anarchy. So, that's where we're at. Uh, Black Talon. I... I'm not a fan of it. I think it's a D tier. Eh, no, we're going blue. It's it's a blue caster frame. And I think that's all that needs to be said about it. Um, it could use a massive buff bungee. Please buff Black Talon. It is a fun exotic. But it's just kind of a blue caster frame at the moment. Let's go Queen Breaker. Queen Breaker's bow. Let's go D tier. Yeah, blue. It, it's it's a linear fusion that can change the sights on it. And then it has a blinding effect. It it's fine. Uh, Eyes of Tomorrow, I think A tier. Great ad clear. Weirdly enough, exotic rocket launcher made for ad clear. And it can clear up champions and majors pretty solidly after you get the buff. Damage isn't horrible when you have the buff, but it's a volley rocket launcher, so it doesn't do as much as it's supposed to. So, th it does have its issues. Here's our first S tier for this list. G-Horn! One of the best exotics in the game. It makes all rockets do more damage, essentially. Uh, the chill clip nerf kind of hit G-Horn pretty well not hard but it hit g horn a little bit um completely undeserved chill clip rockets were not anywhere near the top of the meta and then bait and switch rockets came the same season as that nerf or the season after so like there was no point in doing it because chill clip was gonna get overshadowed anyways by bait and switch or it already was being overshadowed either way there was no point in nerfing Chill Clip on rocket launchers. In my opinion. Grand Overture? I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I'll put an S tier. It blinds. So it has anti-unstop. Which is like the least valuable of them. Not gonna lie. But the damage isn't bad. Ammo economy also not bad. So I think S tier is fine for it. I'm a big fan of it. It's super fun too. Fun is a big factor of where I put things. I have a lot of fun using Grand Overture. So I think it's an S tier exotic. Because it's fun exotic. I like fun Darcy. Darcy, you're F tier. Okay. Actually, who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? Yeah. It's a blue sniper rifle of Volt Shot that happens to be in a worse slot. It's a heavy sniper rifle that does basically a damage of a special sniper. And it has slightly better Volt Shot on it. Fellas, what's the point? What is the point of this exotic? It, it's just bad. Hear me out. Put Whisper Breathing on Darcy. I mean, uh, that's actually the exotic perk. Never mind. Never mind. Don't do it. Just do something to Darcy. Make it better. Holy shit. Salvation's grip. Let's put it in B tier. Great for out of bounds stuff. Um, if you're on a stasis build, you might enjoy it. Veriglass curve exists, so there's less reason to use Salvation's grip. So, I mean, it just depends. Maybe in the final shape. Depending on how you get Frost Armor, it'll be better. Maybe Titans can make some crazy builds with it with the rework to the Harvest aspects. We just don't know yet how that's going to shake out. But maybe maybe it's slapping, you know? Maybe it's out here slapping. 
Sleeper Sim. I'm going A tier. I'm not the hugest fan of it, but I know it can it can put in some work. Depending on the boss, it can put in some work. So I'm going to put in A tier. It does put in work, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. This is S tier though. Leviathan's Breath. It's a slapper, dude. Volatile, which if we're being honest, doesn't do much, but it's an unstop already intrinsically. So it has unstop on it. It has archer's tempo. So you, you know, fire the first arrow, you load the next and you keep firing. And if you have any way to increase your reload speed with avoid weapons or generally you're firing even faster at that point. Leviathan's breath is a slapper after the first headshot and it keeps getting better every time. So five of these with a div or two of these with a div, you're slapping. You know, it's just good. I like it a lot. Even solo, I like Leviathan's Breath. But, you know, if you're not the greatest at the game, a div will help you out. I'll put I'll put Agrius in A tier. Super fun exotic. Um, In certain encounters, it's an S tier exotic. Like, nothing better than it for the most part. It's fun. It's super fun. It's great for some bosses. I, I've used on Crota. It's pretty good in that. Ekthar, it's great for that. You know, bosses that are in your face, it, it can put in some work. And if you have no backup plans, it's putting in work. You know, it's fighting. It's punching above its weight class every time. It's really in there. It's really doing this shit. But if a boss is too far away, it's not doing anything, so... You know, it has its issues. I can recognize that heart shadow. Sorry, it was not where it was supposed to be. I'll put it in C tier. Uh, there's some fun void builds you can do with it. But outside of that, I'm not a huge fan of it. Like, I've done some fun void builds with it. It's just... It does its thing. It's, it's what Black Talon wants to be. If Black Talon was made after Witch Queen... It would be Heart Shadow. That's basically what I'm getting at. If Black Talon was modern, it'd be Heart Shadow. So Black Talon needs needs to figure itself out and figure out what it needs to do to be its own thing that's good. Colony. We'll go F tier, baby. We're going F tier. Uh, so it has auto loading on it intrinsically. And it shoots little robot spiders that deal less damage than an average grenade. I think if direct hits dealt more damage or the spiders walking on enemies dealt damage or something, it could be better. It's void. Maybe rework it to be strand and the spiders can make webs or something. It's just like that could be a catalyst for it. It turns it into strand just like Quicksilver. And then, you know, wherever spiders detonate, they leave tangles. And enemies between tangles are slowed or something. I'm not exactly sure. Just, you know, give it something, Bungie, please. Uh, 1K Voices. 1K Voices is going, it's going D tier, baby. It's going D tier, baby. It's not good. I still don't have it. That shit will not drop for me. It's going D tier. So fuck it. One. Two. It's just not good. So it's going D tier. I think that's fair for it. Lament. We're going S tier, baby. The things it's good at, it's the best at. It heals you. Deals a lot of damage. It's great. It's still great for Atrax. You know, if you're not wanting to use Parasite, use a Lament. Both are great. Speaking of Parasite, let's talk about it. It's going A tier. Uh, the only issue with it is the amount of setup it needs, which is it's not a lot. Uh, yeah, I'll put it in A tier. If there's a champion, oh, where'd it go? Atrax, oh, where'd he go? You know, Parasite just does a lot of damage really fast. But if you're not in a super ad heavy environment, you're losing out, really. So. It does have an issue, but it's not a huge one. Air apparent. We're going D tier. It's not good, but it's unique and it's fun. 
Uh, huge problem with heir apparent that uh, arose for my birthday stream. My friends and I were doing dungeons in a marathon with challenges and random exotics. One of the little challenge event things we had was no ADSing. If you don't ADS air apparent, you can't fire it. So I was sitting there for like a while just using abilities because I couldn't shoot my gun. Or I would just not use my heavy at all. It was just a slot that was taking up space. I can't remember what all the issue was, but I, just, I was just like, wow, I, I have a heavy slot that I can't use. So, that was a lot of fun during the uh, marathon. But yeah, it's a fun exotic, and it's not great, but it does a thing, and it does it in a way that nothing else does. Deathbringer, I'll put an A tier. It's super fun, super unique. Uh, Really, it got destroyed by G-Horn existing. You know, why would you use an exotic rocket launcher when G-Horn exists and it makes legendaries better? Uh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm putting Deathbringer and Eyes into B tier. Uh, yeah. G Horn really just clears them. And there's another rocket launcher that easily clears them, so I can't. I can't put it with this stuff or the other rocket launcher that's better, so. They had to be knocked down. Prospector, it's, it's a blue! It's a blue! You know? It scorches enemies. Cool. It's a rapid fire grenade launcher. That's a setting in the menu. Oh, but you have to hold it and then when you stop holding the trigger, they explode. So it's a breech loaded grenade launcher with a magazine? Sorry. I just, I'm a prospector hater. Okay? I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think it's good. And that's my opinion. So it's facts. Thunderlore, I'm putting S here. Before you send me death threats, listen. Just, just chill. Chill. Calm down. Calm down. I'm not saying it's as good as this stuff for DPS. What I will say, though, is... So, Thunderlord, why I'm putting an S tier. Gift of the Thunder Gods, they've done the past two years, so a lot of players have it, like, for free immediately as they start playing, which is great. And it's a solid exotic all around. Machine Guns... I know aren't the best damage options, okay? I'm not that delusional, okay? I can admit that. But it is a solid pick. If my choice was someone using Thunderlord or they were trying to do Izzy rocket swaps and they were missing all their rockets and they were body shotting with Izzy, I'd have them just run Thunderlord. Because the catalyst gives it ammo back on thunder strikes. The thunder strikes deal damage. The gun does damage. Like, it's pretty good. At, actually, it's really good ad clear. It can handle champions. It can handle majors. It has overload on it. It does a lot of things to help it out and help the user out. It's highly accessible. If I'm playing with someone that's new to the game, I'm not saying, well, you gotta use Leviathan's Breath. Or G Horn or a legendary rocket launcher. Bro, if they miss that shit, they're doing zero damage. Hand them a Thunderlord, they're hitting most of their shots. It's easy to control. It does decent damage. It has the Thunder Strikes, which help it with ad clear and deals damage to the bosses and it refills the magazine. And it gets faster, so the D uh, whatever. You know, it has a lot of things to help new players out as they're starting off. And also, machine guns are really broken in Gambit. Gotta insert that in there, including Thunderlord, especially Thunderlord. But there, there's just a lot packed into Thunderlord that makes it very good for new players. And I think that's why it's S tier. It's not S tier because it's as good for... Like, it, it helps bring new players up to, you know, the medium amount of skill, you know? It helps you go from new to average. But average and up, no one's using Thunderlord because that's where the meta shifts. You know, if you're bad at the game, Thunderlord's great. It's an introductory introductory weapon. 
of course, there's also a tractor cannon that is just strictly better. It's the best exotic in the game, probably, arguably, definitely. But Thunderlord is also great. Because tractor cannon, you gotta know the range. You gotta know how long the debuff lasts. Thunderlord, you you point and click. It is super introductory, introductory for players, and it's very good. I think it's S tier because it helps new players. That's why I'm putting it here. If you're mad at it, I'm not putting it S tier for you. It's for newer players. Okay, it is helping them learn the game. It is one less thing thrown onto them as they're starting out that they can learn later is damage rotations and not using Thunderlord. But Thunderlord helps them get to the point where they can learn that and not feel overwhelmed. Okay, you hear me? Yeah, cool. Super casual weapon, super user-friendly, and it's not bad in any area. Of course, it's bad for damage, but like, you can beat a raid using six Thunderlords. It's... It, and not have that many difficulties. It's not damage travelers chosen. Okay. It it is meant to help players learn the game. And it does a very good a good job at that. Okay. It's training wheels. Tractor cannon. Best exotic in the game. Like it, it just is. Every player gets it to start off with. With the changes to new light. So do they get a better thing than Thunderlord? Yes. But you have to keep in mind how long the debuff lasts. Blah, 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 blah All this other stuff. So, like, it it's super easy to use. On paper, in practice, it's slightly harder to use. Like, it's super easy. But, like, you know, you got to know what someone that's debuffed looks like. You got to know the optimal range for tractor cannon. You got to know how to get in there and get out safely. You know, there's a lot of factors to it. Not really, but like kind of. There's more than Thunderlord. That's what I'm getting at. Thunderlord is the bottom of S. Tractor cannon is the the peak. It's the best exotic they've ever made. Truth. It's actually just a blue. It it's the only rockless tripod, and it has shitty tracking. That's all it is. Two-Tail Fox, I think it's the only A-tier rocket launcher, probably. It scorches, it suppresses, and it jolts. Overload stand no fucking chance against this thing. Uh, it stops Hive Light Bearers in their tracks every time. It's great. Oh yeah, also Tractor Cannon suppresses and, like, super weakens. You know, I got those subclass verbs on it. So it stops overloads just like Thunderlord. Just at closer ranges. But yeah. Also, Tutel has tracking. So you can deal with overloads from more range more easily. Wardcliff Coil. C tier. It's really fun, but it's, it's kind of bad. Gambit's yeah, it's really funny, though. Whisper of the Worm. We'll go B tier. It's just too niche. Like, I know Acreus is niche. Whisper is more niche. You need those longer damage phases. Without super long damage phases and a decent place to sit with a sniper. So it has two factors going against it. It's just not great without those two things. Acreus, you can have short damage phases. It's fine. Short or long. You just need the range. Which you can get up in the face of a lot of bosses. But, you know, certain encounters lean into it more than others. So that's that's where Acreus falls apart. Whisper needs big spaces where you can, you know, sit back and ping someone. Of course, Well just lets you sit anywhere you want. But, you know, using a sniper on something in your face is not the same as sitting 20, 30, 40 meters back, pinging it from across the way with Whisper. World Line Zero... Fun exotic, is it good? Not really. I'll put it in D tier. Um, it, it's just a clear thing that no exotic sword comes anywhere close to Lament. And if this, if we were talking pre nerf and pre, yeah, just pre nerf generally for uh, world line, it would be higher up. I'll put it in B tier to match self. Let's let's just put these together. Because they're pretty similar, you know, it's speed running, oobs, all that. 
or Lion can do it. It's done better with Eager Edge. Salvation's Grip is a thing you can use to help with out of bounds areas. That's that's all they do. Xenophage. I'll go A tier, top of A tier. It for some things it's amazing. Gambit, it's amazing for. It's a super beginner friendly weapon. It's a workhorse. Just like Thunderlord, but Thunderlord is easier to get. You don't need Shadow Keep. Like, you know, you get it. You get it. It doesn't have the overload like Thunderlord has. It's worse Thunderlord, but it, they fill similar roles of doing everything fine. So yeah, Xenophage, I think top of A tier. I think Thunderlord is barely better because of the ammo returning, because of the overload, and because it's free. So moving on to Terminus to Chaos. It's F tier. It's F tier. Just worse Tractor Cannon and worse Divinity. Like It's just bad. It's, it's terrible. It's every issue with the LMG combined. Winter Bite? <laughs> I'll put Winter Bite in C. It's not good. Stasis, L already. I love Stasis, but it's not great. And Winter Bite is just a lot of Stasis issues rolled up together. And then, let's talk about Dragon's Breath. Uh, you know, let's put it there. Uh, solar weapons are usually good. Dragon's Breath is no exception. The only issue with it is you, you can really screw yourself up with it. Say an enemy runs towards you after you hit him. Uh, the rocket will explode on you. That's the main issue. And sometimes it does some goofy stuff where the ignitions don't really happen. But that that isn't all the time. But yeah, Dragon's Breath is really good. Auto-loading, damage over time, a lot of it. Pretty good damage. Dragon's Breath is nice. It's a nice thing to use. I think it's only one per team, right? But I'm not using it over G-Horn in most situations. Anyways, that's about it for my tier list. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe. I don't think I missed anything. I might have. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Cool. But yeah, this is the objective real uh, Destiny 2 exotic heavy tier list. If you disagree, you're wrong. Just accept it. Anyways, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.